Hello there, everyone. How you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we've got some more Entitled Parents stories from you from r slash Entitled Parents. If you enjoy, please like and subscribe, and maybe comment more subreddits you'd like me to go into and read from. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Entitled Mother Refuses to Pay Damages After Her Son Breaks a Toilet Seat at School This story took place about two years ago at my old school. I recently remembered it after I found an article talking about the incident. For context, at this time, the boys' bathrooms in our school weren't anchored correctly to the wall, so our principal put signs on them to show they were out of order. This boy, we'll call him D, either didn't see the sign or overlooked it and stood up on the toilet seat, causing it to break. This is where our parent, the untitled parent, D's mom, comes in. D sends his homeroom teacher a photo of the toilet seat, to which she forwards the image to D's mother, asking what to do. The messages were then leaked and went along the lines of, Teacher, good morning, D. Broke the toilet seat. How is this going to be resolved? Entitled Mom. Good evening. I'll wait till he gets home and explain what happened. Teacher said, I will await the solution. Entitled Mom then said, If the situation calls for it, I will come to the school tomorrow to settle this. But we are not paying for anything. He said he didn't see the out-of-order sign on the door. The stall should have been locked. I do not consider this to be D's fault, rather the school's. Teacher said, I think it is, a, it is a better option if D owns up to his actions, accident or not. He broke the toilet seat, so either he or his parents pay for it. What if everyone were to break school property and blame it on the school? Entitled Mom then said, He has nothing to own up to. It was the school's responsibility to close the stall. Interjecting to say our school stalls had no locking mechanism, so there's no way to do that. I will be coming to school tomorrow to settle this. I do not think children should own up to anything in these circumstances. I am a woman who owns up to her mistakes. I don't think these conditions are safe for my child. Interjecting again, but just so it's clear, D was 14 when this happened. She showed up to school the next day. The details are unclear, as I wasn't Dee's friend or classmate, so I heard anecdotal accounts from classmates who knew him. Apparently, Entitled Mom still refused to pay the school for the damages. In my country, we had a behavior grade system, where students get a point deducted for causing major problems, or having too many absences without a given reason. This grade is very important, as you could not be allowed into certain high schools or universities if it's anything below a 9. The text resumed the next day. Good evening. Seeing as you chose not to pay for the damages called by D, his behavior grade will be lowered, as per the school's rules. Entitled Mom said, Good evening. That sounds like a threat and I don't enjoy it. I will come back to school tomorrow to speak to the principal. The teacher said, This is not a threat, but a consequence of the actions taken. If you wish to speak to the principal, you need to schedule an appointment. She did indeed show up again, demanding to speak to the principal, and still refusing to pay. D did get his behavior grade lowered. Moral of the story, if your kids break something, don't blame it on his school. See, there's one thing I like about this story. The teacher made clear that it was not a punishment, nor a threat. The teacher made it perfectly clear that this was a consequence of the child and mother's actions. So, if you're watching this, keep in mind, every action you make, no matter how small, has a consequence. Now, consequences can be big or small, good or bad. 
every action in this world has a consequence. So try to make those consequences the best you can make them. Anyway, on to the next story. My racist stepmother thinks she's a hundred percent English. <laughs> oh, this ought to be good. I, 25, non-binary, have an entitled and outright abusive stepmother, 61 female, who actually believes she's a hundred percent English. I wish I was joking, but she's the classic racist village Karen who drinks too much pink gin gets her hair dyed constantly to hide the gray hair coming in, and absolutely has to know all the gossip and everyone's business, to the point she constantly asks me what's come in the mail for me and invaded my room on the regular. Her voice is the god-awful English Northwest country twang. And if you know, you know. She is particularly nasty to me, having gaslit, manipulated, and at what point instigated a unaliving on self attempt, as well as gotten me kicked out for a week. All for getting an undercut like I've always wanted. For the last bit, the, the rest is just normal for her. My dad is barely any better, and is a raging sexist, racist, and has severe anger management issues that culminate in the most often being the victim. He used to scream at nine-year-old me for being bad at math, thinking it would make me do better. To this day, he still thinks it was a good idea. Spoiler alert, it wasn't, because I had undiagnosed ADHD, which, surprise surprise, is somewhat common, from my research at least, correct me if I'm wrong in families that have autism in their genetics. My younger brother and older connective relatives have this quite severely. To the point though, because my dad is a racist, she also shares her openly racist ideals for instance. They both hate black people and constantly use the one word white people should never say. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. They criticize the government, saying immigrants shouldn't be allowed into the country. Constantly shit on the very restaurants they buy their beloved Indian Chinese takeout from. Seriously, if you hate them so much, why do you claim you're lo they, you love their food so much? And they absolutely despise anyone that isn't the same race as them. So you can imagine my mistake by implying that somewhere down the line, some of our family probably wasn't English. Because the UK is made up of a lot of people who sailed over to settle throughout history. The absolute outrage on her face. It was only matched by the indignant, No, because I'm 100% English. There aren't any foreigners in my family. Sure, buddy. Sure. I tell her to shut the F up whenever possible about this, or call her out about any racist BS, and because of this, she thinks I have an attitude. News just in guys, being an advocate for BLM, I attended many a protest because it's the right thing to do, and decent treatment of fellow human beings means I have an attitude, oh my god. There's a positive to all this though, and I didn't want to post my experience until I had one, because I'm a firm believer in positivity breeding more of it. I attended a fine art university in the UK for three years, and chose to live in the dorms as much as possible. I went no contact as much as I could, and while some Christmases were absolutely awful, being completely alone, while I knew my family was feasting. I got to do it as my own identity. I came out to my dad about being non-binary over the phone. He accepted it, but barely. Cut and dyed my hair white, as I always wanted. He specifically said I could do that when I wasn't under his roof. Mark that off as a mini malicious compliance. <laughs> I got to attend a pride parade for the first time and gain new friends. Found out that I actually do love pink. I just hate it when it's forced on me or in too tight s shirts with taxi tacky slogans. And for the grand finale, as of the 17th of June 2020, 
I got notice that I can graduate, and my application to move into a flat with my best friend has been approved. I'm 25, and despite having lived for three years away from home, I've never felt this free until this very moment. I don't have to go home anymore, ever again. No more abuse or walking on eggshells, worrying that even the slightest noise will set my parents off into an argument. I have barely any belongings besides my PC and some clothes. A couple things to help me with dorm life, and I'm poor as heck. But you know what? I'll take that any day over being a punching bag to my parents, quote unquote. I finally move in July 8th. Good on you. Good on you. Entitled Kid Tries to Burn Neighbor's House Down Apparently the Angel did this by accident because he would never do such a thing. Hi Reddit, before I start, I apologize for the lack of quality. This is my first Reddit post and I'm typing this out on a phone. Anyway, this story took place a few years ago in my old neighborhood. A super entitled kid lived up the street and he thought his life was GTA. This kid was a frickin' brat. As far as I know, he had never been disciplined in his life, so this obviously meant he never learned proper manners and did whatever he wanted. He was around 10 to 11 years old, around the same time this took place, which shows how immature he was. He would always use a slingshot he had to sling rocks at me and my best friend. His mother never did jack about it, and one of the neighbors would have to tell him to stop. I'm surprised we didn't just beat the crud out of him, but I guess we didn't want to get in trouble with his mom, who... He's a huge mom. She's a huge mama bear. He chucked a rock at my a neighbor's water pipes that connect to the hose and broke it and didn't receive any consequences at all. However, that's another story for another day. This one night, during a neighborhood party, he somehow got his hands on a lighter. He grabbed a bunch of paper and snuck to the side of the house that belonged to the neighbors hosting the party and tried to light the house on fire using the paper to get a fire going. Fortunately, my friend's dad caught the entitled kid doing this and stopped the entitled kid from burning anything else. My friend's dad immediately informed the neighbors and the entitled kid's mother. Of course, this wouldn't be an entitled parent story without an entitled parent. The entitled mom got super defensive at this and yelled at them saying, Her son did this by accident. She refused to believe that her little angel would do such a thing on purpose. While it could have been an accident with him being irresponsible and dicking around with the lighter, he was old enough to know not to frick around with lighters. Also, he and the neighbor's oldest son, he is about the same age as Entitled Kid, hated each other. The Entitled Kid constantly bullied his younger brother, both verbally and physically, with rocks. Both parents tried to explain to the Entitled Mom that all the evidence was there, and that got Entitled Kid was caught up in the act. The Entitled Mom lost her shit and stormed off with her little shit stain in tow. I never even heard about this until my friend told me the uh, next day. I don't know if the neighbors pressed charges or what became of the entitled kid. We moved out of that neighborhood and into a new neighborhood close by almost a year ago, but I still see my friend often. In the end, I blame entitled mom for this. She never disciplines her little d-bag, which is why he is such a brat. If the entitled mom just punished him at least a little bit, he would probably be a better person. Anyway, thank you for reading until the end. I hope you have a good day or night. Entitled mom tried to force me to give her son a job. I, female 18, and my ex-boyfriend, male 20, broke up two years ago. I'ma call him R. R was really creepy, not just towards me, but towards any other woman as well. And he had been quite aggressive while drunk, so obviously I was very thankful to break up with him and go two years without talking to him. 
I started a summer job in coffee shop a few weeks ago to save up for rent when I'm in college next year. This morning, R and his mother came into the coffee shop. It was definitely just a coincidence as they do live around that area. R looked surprised and uncomfortable, but I carried on as though he was just another customer. This was going fine until his mum makes a comment about how she recognized me from somewhere. I just laughed politely and said, Oh, I used to, I used to date R. She was really polite and chatty, asking me about how school and exams have been going and about how I got the job. I told her I just applied online when she said, Me and R's father have been trying to help him find a job. This place would be perfect! Or something along those lines, I'm paraphrasing. I just laughed politely and told her that the management is really great. She asked me how he could apply to work here. My heart sank. Obviously, I didn't want to be working alongside my creepy ex. I just told her he could email the hiring manager and get her contact info from the cafe's website. I told her that we were really overstaffed at the moment and it's a miracle that I was even offered an interview and the reason I got the job is probably just because I have already worked in many cafes and have professional barista training. Couldn't you just refer him to the manager? God, she just wouldn't give up. I told her that since he hasn't worked in the cafe before or anywhere as far as I'm aware and doesn't have any training, I could not refer to him, as there were no grounds to support him. Employees are an investment for businesses. At this point, R's mom started raising her voice. Note that R still hasn't said a word. She demanded that I let go of whatever personal issue I have with her son and help him get a job here. I told her I would have told anyone the exact same thing, regardless if it was R or not. She then started complaining about how unprofessional and selfish I was being. I told her I can get my manager and she can relay any queries to him. She agreed, so I went to the back to get him. He told her the exact same thing as I did, and told them they were more than welcome to apply, but it would probably be a waste of time. She started snapping at him. Then R spoke for the first time and said that they should just leave. His mom agreed, but didn't fail to cuss the staff out while she was leaving. Luckily, the cafe was empty except for one table, so no one was too bothered by it. I just carried on with my work. I'm not too bothered with the whole thing, but it's definitely a dinner time story for when my family gets home from work. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe, it helps the channel a lot. See you next time.